Israel has been the focus of a bitter territorial dispute. Many of its early opponents were not Muslims, but Palestinian Christians. In recent years, however, the conflict has taken on the qualities of a holy war. 1967. In the Six-Day War, Israel successfully crushed the military forces of the threatening Arab states. The victory would only escalate the tensions in the Middle East. Twelve years later, Americans would awaken to the fact that they too were targets of rage. This time, from fundamentalist Muslims. In the wake of a popular rebellion against the U.S.-backed Shah of Iran, the Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini, a highly respected Shia cleric, returned from exile in France to establish a new Islamic government. The uh, Ayatollah's revolution, which symbolized the response of ordinary Iranians, was also a response to modernity itself. How far would the modern age impinge on and change traditional life in Iran? A lot of people felt there were too many changes taking place and too fast. Because it was seen as an ardent supporter of modernity at the expense of Islamic values, the U.S. was cast as the great Satan. In 1979, Iranian revolutionaries seized the American embassy in Tehran, holding its diplomatic personnel hostage for 444 days. The Ayatollah Khomeini was now transformed from an Ayatollah talking of religion and uh, theological matters into a practical ruler. Now the big question of course is how a cleric transfers or transforms from a man of scholarship into a man of administration and sometimes that transformation is not a very successful one. In 1981, the forces of Islam turned against one of their own. Many Muslims were enraged that Egypt's president, Anwar Sadat, had signed a U.S. brokered peace treaty with Israel. But the soldiers who participated in Sadat's assassination were Islamic extremists intent on establishing a fundamentalist Islamic state in Egypt. There was real concern for the first year or two that there would be a major Islamic revolution in Egypt. That didn't happen. The average Egyptian was not inspired by the Iranian revolution to move in that direction. In 1990 and 91, America became directly involved in the Middle East conflict, leading an international coalition against Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein's invasion of Kuwait in the Gulf War. Hussein's aggressive campaigns, however, had no connection with Islam. Saddam Hussein is far from an Islamic figure. He is a military dictator, he's a tyrant, he tortures, he, his citizens disappear. Uh, he's gassed uh, and killed uh, the Kurds up in the north, he's killed and bombarded the Shias in the south. Uh, but remember that he has a certain symbolic significance for the Arab world because people were giving a choice to themselves. Do we support a Muslim ruler, however bad? Or do we support America, which is attacking a Muslim ruler? In more than 50 years of Arab-Israeli conflict, the world has witnessed a multitude of atrocities committed in the name of Islam. Assassinations, hijackings, and more recently, suicide bombings. Now, of course, um, suicide in Islam is categorically forbidden to a Muslim. Uh, in theory, God gives life, only God can take life. Today, radical factions of Islam have honed in on the United States as a target of terrorism, culminating in the attacks of September 11, 2001. September 11 made Americans aware of the viciousness of the radical, violent fringe in Islam. But it also, paradoxically, 
made more Americans aware of the fact that there are Muslims who are their neighbors who care in the same way that they do. Muslims of the world are at a crossroads. How will they define their faith in the modern world? For all Muslims, it is said every new day is a challenge to live an exemplary life. For at the end of time, everyone must answer to God on the day of judgment. In fact, all Islamic teachings can be...